You're listening to the Reds Podcast. This is episode number 19. Why is it that some people make more money for doing the exact same service that other people aren't making that much money for? Today we're going to talk about that, give you very specific solutions to how you can up your prices for doing the exact same work that you're doing now. That's coming up on Red Podcast. This is the Red Podcast. Real entrepreneur development. Make more money, work less, and live a life of freedom. No BS advice that really works. Here's your hosts, David Hooper and Laurel Staples. And we're back. Man, I just clipped the hell out of that. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, that's like old school radio. You ever seen that skit on Saturday Night Live? No. Anyway, well. We are back. You're back. You just got back from vacation. I did. Yeah, you didn't take me. No, I did not take you. <laughs> you took a few days off to go down down to the mountains, as we say. Sometimes a girl needs a break. Yeah, yeah. So tell me about it. Was it good? You were in the mountains for five days. It was awesome. Yeah, here in Nashville, it's what, like 95 degrees? It's in the 90s right now, yeah. A thousand percent humidity. Yeah. And in the mountains, it was like high of 72, and there's like a nice breeze, and there's a screened in porch, and. You're overlooking more mountains? More mountains. It was awesome. There are black bears running loose in the neighborhood. I didn't see any black bears. I was looking. I was looking. I didn't have any defenses. Yeah. I spent my earlier part of the day here in the gym and there's a pool and everybody's laying out by the pool. Not me. I mean, I was there lifting weights, <laughs> but I kind of had the deep thought. We we need to cue the deep thought music here. <laughs> I don't know what that would be, but well, we can find it on Audio Jungle. And here's, here's what we do is we're, you and I are both members of a gym. It's a uh, I guess it's a higher end neighborhood. We'll say a lot of nice houses, nice cars, expensive neighborhood, and a lot of rich people there. And it, I thought about it. I was as I was looking over these people in the middle of the day who obviously aren't working jobs in the middle of the day. They're just hanging out. They're not worried about money. And do you think that rich people are able to take vacations? because they're rich or the people who have that work-life balance just somehow attract money? That's a good question because I think taking vacation is an essential part of definitely being a business owner. I mean, it's like taking a pit stop if you're trying to drive a race. You know, that that pit stop will affect the outcome of the race. And I don't know. I don't know. It's, a, it's like a chicken or egg thing. For and it's that so one. counterintuitive because in America – we have the fewest number of weeks of vacation. I mean, sometimes in Europe, they're given like 12 weeks of vacation a year. Wow. <laughs> and most people in this country, if they've been working a job for a while, two, maybe three. And yeah. a lot of people don't take vacation at all. So, like you. No. <laughs> hell no. You guys are all wimps. Well, I do take breaks. So like I said, I mean, I spent my beginning of the work day at the gym. I do what I call a pulse. I don't take several days off at a time all the time. But what I do just about every day is take big chunks out of the day to go do something that I enjoy. My question, and is it just me? Because if you see a picture of me, you know that I'm like super pale. But it never seemed much fun to just like sit out in the sun and roast. Were these people like just laying out? Or just laying the out, just scene? frying. <laughs> you could you could hear the sizzle of all the, <laughs> the Hawaiian tropic oils they'd lathered themselves with you're not going to get a tan if you use like spf 50 i know that's why i've never gotten a tan <laughs> i get a sunburn but not a tan no it, it's not sexy over here yeah yeah well the good thing is you're not going to look like a corinthian leather sofa when you know 40 that will never happen yeah i'll like they, never get a wrinkle these women rate. look like the epitome of health from they're like a monet <laughs> From a That's few yards my back. Yeah, I stole that from you. Yeah, you did. You have to explain it now. Well, I'm going to let you explain it because I just stole it from you. Yeah, you did. Well, I, this is probably something people have heard about in movies. But a Monet is when you see it from far back, 
it looks really good and it looks really together and then you get really close to it and you it's just all like messy and crazy and that's what these women yeah. are <laughs> yeah yeah they, no judgment they're aging quite fast yeah out there by the pool but they're taking a break they are taking a break and the counterintuitiveness of taking a break is kind of what we're talking about at least as far as the counterintuitiveness part Today we're going to talk, Laurel, about what you're really selling because in business, what you think you're selling is not necessarily what people are buying from you. And I don't know about you, David, but this took me a long time to figure out because it is counterintuitive. Did, did you find this when you started in your business? Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. That. Are you just a genius? Well, I don't know that I was necessarily a genius, but I think that, I mean, I guess I did. I, I got it genius. pretty quickly. Well, I started my business in the radio promotion business and street promo. So my job was to get records played on the radio. And that's part of a bigger promotion. So to me, it was pretty obvious that I was just kind of the cog in the wheel. Is that how you say that? I'll go, the wheel. I'll go with it. Yeah. 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 So I, I was I was just part of a larger promotion, and I think that is what people are buying regardless, even if it's, if it's not a promotion business. There's always a secondary product, and what people were wanting from me was not radio promotion. They wanted people to know about what they had, and they wanted people to know about what they had so they could fill venues. And they wanted to fill venues because they wanted to sell records. And they wanted to sell records because they wanted to make money. I mean, it just goes on down the line. And I think you can take anything that you're selling and take it down a line like that to find out the very end result. And that might be for a musician, for example, they want to be famous. But for a lot of people, like let's say it's diet pills. You're not selling pills. What you're really selling is self-confidence for somebody. What you're really selling is somebody who's going to get on a plane without having other people look at them or without the embarrassment of having to get a seatbelt extender or a second seat or have a comment from somebody sitting next to you. I mean, imagine that, the embarrassment of somebody requesting a steward or stewardess to move you. That's really what you're buying. You're not buying pills. I agree. And I think the problem is that a lot of people go into business and they think they're selling just pills in that case. They think they're just trying to sell you diet pills. So they're going to tell you more about the diet pills than about the results. And I have a story that that kind of relates to that. I was working with a client and she was a health coach, just like I used to be. So I have a lot of experience in the field. And And I said, tell me about the free session that you do with your potential clients. So she had, she had people coming through a funnel where she'd get them into her office and do a 30 minute free session as a lot of coaches do. And then at the end, pitch her services to that potential client and hope that they would say yes and give her money and she would have a client. And so I asked her, you know, how are you doing that session? How are you doing that pitch at the end? And she related it to me. Well, you know, we just talk and I ask them questions about their diet and this and that and get to know them a little bit. And then at the end, I just tell them about my six-month coaching program and walk them through that we meet every other week and 12 sessions and their one-hour sessions, you know, and just tell them about the program. And, you know, I told her, I was like, well, you know, you're not selling the program. Nobody cares about your coaching program. And I think before I explained it, I think I heard her feelings there. But I was like, nobody cares about health coaching. Nobody needs or wants health coaching. What they want is results. What you were talking about, David, with the diet pills, what they want is to be able to fit into their clothes, self-confidence, to be able to you know, have a more intimate relationship with their partner, things sure, like and, and that. And the pills and the coaching are actually standing in the way of that mm-hmm. when you think about it. If you could skip those things and just deliver them feeling good about themselves, that would be a more effective business, I think. Yeah, nobody wants diet pills or health coaching or what you think you're selling. So if you don't really know what you're selling, 
in the case of my client, she didn't know what exactly she was selling. She thought she did, but she didn't. And it was preventing her from actually making the sale and connecting with people. So that's why we thought this would be a good topic today to really dive underneath. Like, what are you actually selling to people? Because that's what's going to lead to you making the money that you want to make. One of the things that people buy is association. Explain that. Association would be, for example, Harvard. If I'm going to Harvard, you can get a college degree anywhere, so you're not paying for a degree, but you want that Harvard name on it. Or it could be a new car. You want to be associated with a certain brand that has a certain prestige. And prestige is another one that we'll get into. But you want to be basically connected to whatever you're paying money for. And sometimes it's another person. We've certainly had people pay us, Laurel, just because they want to be associated with us. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, for example, who do that would be like advertisers. They pay for association all the time. If you have an endorsement from Oprah, Oprah is going to rub off on your product. That's why celebrity endorsements can command such high money. So a lot of times people are paying for association and don't think just because you're not a celebrity that somebody would not pay you for that as well. And an association that popped in my head was when I was picking my latest doctor, I wanted a different kind of doctor, somebody who had an an MD but also knew about holistic medicine and was looking online for this person because I didn't have any referrals. And I was on this specific doctor's website and it said that she studied with Andrew, is it Andrew Weald? Wild? Andrew how Weil is how Andrew I've Weil. always said it, yeah. Okay. The guy with the big beard kind of looks like Santa Claus. Yes, that's him. And so it said that she had studied with him. And so instantly that was like that association because I have some of his books and I know about his mentality and what he does with nutrition. And I was like, oh, okay. So having that association I think is, is really important. And it's valuable. Obviously, this is why you ended up hiring that person. If Oprah is going to endorse it, you think to yourself, well, she wouldn't endorse everything, would she? And you trust Oprah. So it's trust that she's disseminating (laughs) through your product. And in the case of my doctor, Andrew Weil sold her something, you know, sold her whatever program that she went in and he was able to sell it to her because of the association with him. And she's able to put his name on her website and then sell to me. I've seen that happen a lot with coaches. There are certain coaches online that in my opinion are all PR. They're well known, but you're not really going to get the quality of service that you would get from another coach. I just saw one and these are coaches that that you would know if you're listening to this podcast. And I I wrote one of the kind of the secondary coaches last week. I said, man, (laughs) it's too bad. I just found out about your stuff and it's amazing. It's too bad that these guys are kind of running over you, but it happens all the time and you can use it to your advantage. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It depends on which side you're on, I suppose. That would be the first one. I mentioned a little bit prestige. Now, prestige is like Harvard. If you've got a degree from Harvard, that's going to be better than the degree I have from University of Memphis. (laughs) Just because Harvard (laughs) is known for education. Would somebody necessarily get a better education there than they would in Memphis? Well, not for what I wanted to do. They didn't have commercial music at Harvard. Still, if you say, hey, I went to Harvard, people think that you're smart. And that kind of prestige is something that you can sell. I was talking about cars a minute ago as well. Is Audi a better car than Subaru? Eh, Probably not. (laughs) Who knows? Well, maybe. Okay, maybe. (laughs) Is it better better than Hyundai? Is it going to get you from A to B better? Well, yeah, Yeah. it's going to get you there certainly around town, but the prestige factor is 10 times as much. And also people talked about coaching. If, you know, they're coaching programs that are, you know, a thousand dollars and that are a hundred thousand dollars. And some people don't want to pay a thousand dollars because they want the prestige of being in a group that costs a hundred thousand well, dollars. And or... saying that they spent that much money. Mm-hmm. So sometimes by charging your clients more for it could be coaching, we're talking about that a lot, but it could be a product. Just the fact that you said that 
it's much more. I, I've got this credit card, Laurel. You know, it's a it's a metal credit card, and the way they sold it to me, it's called Chase Sapphire Platinum, which is kind of their knockoff of the American Express Black Card. Mm-hmm. Not nearly as cool, but it's the same thing. It's a metal. 